Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here this the new campaign in the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Vladimir Putin Lover, but we're playing as Russia today. We'll see what path we go. Uh, we got Ruski Mir. It's been three long decades since the Soviet Union fell, and the Russian state slowly worked to rebuild itself in the chaos of the 1990s. Under the leadership of Vladimir Putin, our country has regained some of its international standing, though we are so far from our former prestige. Russia faces opposition from the so-called civilized Western world, who criticize us as backwards and despotic while preaching liberty and freedom. In reality, they merely seek to divide and conquer. We stand in opposition to them as proponents of a new geopolitical outlook. Multipolarity. Currently, as the United States is looking elsewhere abroad internally, a sense of Russophobia is now shifting towards Europe as a globalist elite wish to see or use Ukraine as a spirit against us, now making conflict inevitable for which we must prepare. We are working to fight for our sovereignty and a way of life against the Golden Billion Colonials and their attempts to destroy all those who resist them. We will continue to support anti-globalist forces through continuing to send aid to those in the Middle East and Africa who think alike. As an increasingly unstable and angry rule, we might just get what we want or lose everything. Our mighty maze of Khrushchevkas may harbor people with many diverse views, but all patriots share a common thought of Russia must survive. To Westerners, the Russian political system seemed always like a riddle. While in reality, there's nothing out of the ordinary, save for a few national characteristics. The political scene is divided among three biggest parties, the Communist Party, the Russian Federation. While the USSR fell 30 years ago, many Russians still have cozy ideas, socialist ideas, and nostalgia. Coupled with oligarchical inequality that has caused a great deal of resentment, the Communist stands Russia's second largest party. <coughs> United Russia, a decades-long conservative party that has held the majority in the Duma and a de facto party of the president, UR stands for a new outlook on the Russia beyond past uh, formations. The Liberal Democratic Party of Russia is, despite its name, a nationalist populist party led by a popular showman. It comes want to create a new communist... A new Soviet Union, the LDPR strives to create a second Russian Empire. All the parties do not agree on virtually anything, only the general idea of restoring Russian greatness. Though have eternally scabbled and debated, if not one for, for one man, uh, Vladimir Putin, the unifier he stands above them all, matching their civic cooperation. As long as he's at the helm, they'll continue to play by his rules. The pendulum swings swiftly, an off-system opposition. In any country, there's a layer of people who do not participate in the usual politics of the country. But on the contrary, try to organize as their own as a counterbalance to the official one. Historically in Russia, the slayer people is liberal, although there are many other colors in it, and the liberal gen is absolutely dominant. Although they do not to a large extent threaten the current state system, their existence and strengthening can have negative consequences for a country. It is they who are being used by the West to try to derail Russia from its path and to obstruct the realization of a common dream in every possible way. The administration can monitor the growth of the liberal opposition and try to, to curtail or reduce the strength in every possible way so that the negative effects become weaker. West's useful idiots. Ooh. So what do we got here? Ever since Putin's ascension to power, the Russian political sphere has become a multi-layered mechanism with many deterrences, deals, and personal connections, some call it Towers of Kremlin. However, despite the seemingly united uh, or unif unified facade, it has an opportunity for political groups to extend their influence and loopholes undermine this machine. The presidential administration, of course, will do its best to curtail such acts of self-will. We're going for going for a united Russia for now. A just Russia, huh? Liberal opposition. Huh. Doesn't have an official leader. Pawns making moves. Liberalism spreads. Hmm. Cracked on our pro Western NGOs. State Duma. The State Duma of the Federal Assembly of the Russian Federation is the lower house of the Federal Assembly. The Parliament of the Russian Federation. The highest representative and legislative body of power in Russia, along with the Federation Council. The legal status of the State Duma is defined in Chapter 5 of the Russian Constitution. Oligarchy is 50%. The children of the dashing 90s, when state property passed into private hands and Russia's economy was in chaos. Thanks to privatization, political connections, and corruption, they were able to amass huge fortunes and build real business empires. And the Putin era, they retained their influence, adapting to the new reality. Some joined state projects, while others used the capital to further enrich themselves through commodity monopolies. Interesting. But the Russian dream. A country encompassing one eighth of the world, one that refuses to be just a footnote in history, with territories and people outside it yet yearn to return. One that refuses Western hegemony stands for the multipolar world order. While the past century has not been kind to us, it also gave us some of the most glorious moments, and until the Russian soul is extinguished, we will continue our trek to our own path. Trek our own path. Enrich Mother Russia. Fight against the right. Fight against the left. Oligarchs request military investment at Ninsi Novgorod. This wouldn't be bad to do either. Local oligarchs from Ninsi Novgorod have approached the government, offering support for the president in return for an informal guarantee that Ninsi Novgorod will be the site of a new munitions plant for the army. They argue that building a plant in the area would create a lot of jobs and provide the army much need, with much needed support in an increasingly dangerous world. The oligarchs also mention an excellent working relationship with several influential members of the Duma. Build military factories in Ninsi. Huh, we can do that. 
Crush Western influence. Well, let's see. We could do that. Where is that? It's right here. Well, we wanted to make a city. Here, you can have it. Why not? Liberal influence. Oh, they don't want to go like communist or completely oligarchic. Spanish government framework. Putin's speech on amendments to the Constitution. In a highly anticipated speech, Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed the nation, outlining a series of proposed constitutional amendments and announcing the start of preparations for a nationwide referendum. The amendments, if approved, would mark significant changes to Russia's political landscape and governance structure. During his speech, President Putin emphasized the importance of updating the country's constitution, reflecting the evolving needs and aspirations of its citizens. He highlighted that the proposed amendments aim to strengthen democratic institutions, protect individual rights, and ensure the continued stability and development of Russia. Let the people decide. Um, is there anything here we really, would really want? Or move against the fifth column? Huh. Defend Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Anti-globalist bulwark. Review the mandate. Spread anti-West -prop propaganda. Anti-Ukrainian military exercises. A thousand years of Putinism. Guarantee of the system. Towers of the Kremlin. Orange Mother Russia. Books on corruption. Sanction-proof economy. That wouldn't be bad either. Russian economy of the future. We beat the COVID-19 virus in rich mother Russia. Unfortunately for us, the golden two thousands did not last forever. With the lowering of oil prices and the sanctions placed on us, we were forced to hoard money for an emergency fund. However, hoarding money is pointless if you do not use it. Using just a small fraction of said reserve, alongside our connections with oligarchs, we can boost our economy to greater heights. I love fuel. Yesterday, the RF government announced its decision to resign after the announcement of the president's address to the Federal Assembly. In particular, it talked about introducing amendments to the Constitution, which would give the State Duma the right to approve the candidacies of the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Ministers, and Ministers. Russian President Vladimir Putin proposed Mikhail Mishutin as head of the Federal Tax Service, and today, he was confirmed in his new position. Prime Minister Dmitry Med uh, Medvedev was offered the newly created position of Deputy Chairman of the Security Council, or kleptocratic state, which sucks too. Okay, look at that. Remove Medvedev and add Mikhail Mishutin. We have a Russian Orthodox Church. We've got permanent defense readiness. Hmm. Russian dream, tender authoritarianism. The church says, and the petrol economy. Let's see. Boop, boop. Just because uh, I might get copyright struck, we can do that. But uh, I want the political power first. Let's see what we can do here first. Because right now we're losing money every month. Yeah, 41 billion. That's not good. I, I really don't care which route we go, as long as we have a good time. Uh, Ancestral development goes up. Use conscripts to build railways, huh? Utilize church authority. Yeah, more weekly stability goes up. Huh. Or, can I use it for something else down here? Could use a little more command power, could we? Army X speaking would be nice. More organization would be good. More attack would be good as well. I like when I getting this guy. Alexander Fulman. Good. Who do we have here? Sergei Shogyu. Sounds familiar. Army X speaking game. Deal political, but cannot be fired. Well, it sounds like Russia in a nutshell. Rich Mother Russia. A book on corruption. Um, I kind of want to go with a uh, sanction proof economy. While corruption remains a big problem, the main concern is the country's vulnerability to Western sanctions. It's been years since they were first placed, and it seems silly for local businessmen to take on Western corporations still remaining in our markets. But if we level the playing field and let our capitalists uh, some breathing room, perhaps even Western manufacturing capabilities can be ours? First COVID-19 cases in Russia. The first COVID coronavirus cases have been reported from citizens returning from trips to China. While the number of infected is currently low, we must not neglect this issue lest it spiral out of control. Also, if it sounds like I'm sick, it's because I am. Uh, all right, so what do we got? COVID-19 prevention. Back to normal against chipization. Of course, lockdowns, yeah. Ah. We're no longer be susceptible. Back to normal. Mm. 
minus four percent. What else we got here? Service? Huh. High combat equality. That wouldn't be bad. Basic training programs. We definitely want to go with rigid training programs eventually. Rules of engagement, mandated reporters. Later experience gain, less attack though. Combat equality, conscription equality. Limited workers' rights. Mm. Monthly farming, industrial. Import economy, what is this? Business as usual. Get 2% more consumer goods. Hmm. Moderate taxes, higher taxes. Low interest rates, near zero interest rates. I don't want any interest rates. High regulation. No regulation. What else do we want? No minorities. What is sound under the war? Tough security. Mm. General exemptions. Religious exemptions, monthly society, academic farming, and get the same amount of political power. You know, I don't mind hurting yourselves. Educational exemptions. You know what? I want more research speed. We might need to keep this book apart because I really don't know if we need it or not, but we'll see. American Taliban peace deal, good for them. I'm going to go the oligarchs. I don't like how much consumer goods they're taking right now. It really, really sucks. Sanction proof economy, which we read about. Uh, enforce lockdowns. Well, it seems like this virus is more serious than we first thought. Let's put Russia on lockdown first, sort it out, and then we'll have a job to do. Death of Edward Limonov. Today, if you know yourself for Ekina, Ek, oh, ecocentric bestseller writer, political activist and leader Edward Limonov, who passed away at the age of 77 after experiencing complications caused by surgery. In the 90s, Limonov became one of the main opposition figureheads against Yeltsin's government, and together with Dugin and Letov, founded the National Bolshevik Party, whose policies and practices later shaped modern-day reading of the national Bolshevism in Russia. After Putin's takeover, and subsequent stabilization and de-radicalization helped by Limonov's imprisonment on charges of weapon possession and the creation of illegal armed groups to take over in northern Kazakhstan, NVP's popularity began to dwindle until in 2007 party's name and symbols were banned by the authorities, only a few years later, however. Limonov went to rebrand the party under the new title, The Other Russia, named after one of Limonov's manifests. Aging couple with health problems made Limonov turn away from inner party matters, giving leadership to the younger apprentices, remaining the public face and speaker for the party during various protest events and meetings. He was among the most supportive of Donbass Rebellion in 2014, rallying his part and personally visiting front lines. He was buried in the Troikovsky uh, 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 Cemetery with coffin wrapped in old NBP flag. Many of his supporters attended, giving last respect to the Gramps, taking oath near his grave that they will fight to bring his vision to reality. Lamento Mori. So we lose a little bit of approval rating, gain some more liberal support, lose 100 political power. That's not good. Flat safety for the economy. Yeah. That sounds like the route we would take in another campaign, but not for now. Utilize church authority, lose political power. We can get more stability, though, which we do like. Pawns we can move, other party support will grow. Liberalism spreads. I really like, like I said, I don't really care which way, way we go. Um, Additional development. Let's have less influence. Complete an additional civilian factory than constructed in Nitsi Novgorod. Wait. An additional civilian factory or military factory? Uh, just in case that's safer, because it said military originally. Wrangle the oligarchs. Little expenses are quite bad. We may need higher taxes here. Crackdown on pro Western NGOs? Sure. So this will be done when? The 27th of April. And then we'll see what happens with that. What are we missing here? self propelled anti-air. Also, if I sound sick, it is because I am. And I'm very tired and exhausted and I have a fever of some sort. Not bueno, not good, I don't know. But it is what it is. The show must go on usually. Not always, but usually. 
We need those man pads eventually as well. So we're built empty air. Force lockdowns, purchase Sinovac. Start vaccine research. Well, there we go to the route of the left wing route. That wouldn't be terrible. Back to normal. Purchase Sinovac. Well, I suppose the Chinese already have their vaccine ready. Why should we waste our own money on domestic vaccines again? Just take ones from a friend. Not like they'd be radically different. Encourage domestic production would be nice. All right, so it's May 5th. Okay, so it's completed. So the military factory. So we got more political power from that. That's nice. It's conscripts. Victory Day. In a show of military might, the Russia held its Victory Day parade, marking yet another anniversary of the Soviet Union's victory over the Nazi Germans in World War II. Thousands of troops marched through Moscow's red squares, tanks, missile systems, and other military hardware rumbled past. The parade was attended by Vladimir Putin and other top officials. The event featured more than 14,000 troops, including those from India, China, and a few other nations friendly to Russia. Russian Air Force jets and helicopters also flew over the red square, leaving trails of color smoke in the sky. This year's parade was particularly notable for its inclusion of the latest military hardware, including the T-14 Armata tanks and the Kinzhal hypersonic missile system. While the Russian government has touted Russia's military modernization efforts as a way to maintain its defense capabilities against potential threats, Victory Day Parade remains an important event for many Russians, who see it as a symbol of national pride and unity, as the country continues to navigate the challenges of the geopolitical tension. The parade serves as a reminder of Russia's past sacrifices and its determination to defend its interests. Let us forget those that paid the ultimate price. Um, we lose political power, get more weekly stability. Yes, I'm okay with that. Get more money in the end, more society development. You can now push us for new red belts. Wanting new uh, revanche? Ooh. What is this? Has completed focus. Meet with Zyuganov. That's down here. Well, that's not good. Stash report on the American situation. Dear Vladimir Vladimirovich. Having compiled and analyzed necessary information, the SFR is prepared to report that the political situation in the U.S. is approaching a critical juncture. The country's establishment is fracturing amidst a fierce battle between the two parties and their respective leaders, notably Donald J. Trump. The economic downturn following the oil crisis has caused many Americans to lose faith in the system, leading to the proliferation of various extremist movements across the political spectrum, including communists, hardline fascists, and even satanic cults. The upcoming November elections are anticipated to be a tipping point, with some experts predicting the potential outbreak of open civil conflict among the factions within American society. Regardless of the outcome, it is evident that America is no longer capable of maintaining its position as a sole global superpower that it once held, and many retreat into isolationism as a best-case scenario for the Russian Federation. The situation presents both opportunities and significant risks. It is crucial to remember that Europe may swiftly move to fill the void left by the U.S. as a leader of the globalist order. For further details, please refer to the enclosed document folder containing all pertinent information. Army dedicated to serving Russia, Sergei Yevgenovich Naryshkin. Outstanding work. Well, I guess we gotta go down here. Subvert this influence. Fight against the left. The left presents the main danger to our current system. Support from Navalny. Navalny during previous local elections, sovereign citizens of the USSR cult anti-establishment rhetoric. Since the nationals have already been cracked down on, the left should follow suit. It's only fair. We can go red. Zyuganov route. Ew, yeah. We have coronavirus pandemic, not good. We have Western sanctions. Pretty normal. The Westerners just don't understand us. You know? They're just a bunch of haters. That's all they are. Just because I have soldiers stationed on the border next to Ukraine means nothing. For a successful all Russian voting and constitutional amendments, Russia has. what? 50% more are in the Russian House of Cards. Ooh. Vladimir Putin decided to put an end to external interference in our country. One of the steps to do so is pass constitutional amendments that will help strengthen our sovereignty efforts. Despite those noble intentions, there are many people in Russia who see his autocratic centralization and a loophole for Putin to rule as long as he pleases. The majority will vote yes no matter the outcry, but backlash of our support was not homogeneous enough would be severe. Pawns making moves. Main Cathedral of the Russian Armed Forces. The grand opening of the Main Cathedral of the Russian Armed Forces took place place today in Russia. This event was a significant step in strengthening the spiritual and moral foundation of the army, and also symbolizes the unity of the nation and support for the country's military forces. The main cathedral of the Russian armed forces is located on the territory of the patriarchal compound Saspo Androno Andronikov Monastery in Moscow. It has become the largest Orthodox church in the country, and is an important part of patriotism and faith. The opening ceremony of the church was organized under the leadership of the chairman of the Synodal Department for the interaction of the church with the armed forces and the law enforcement agencies 
Archpriest Dmitry Smirnov. The event was attended by representatives of religious, political, and public organizations, as well as military personnel and veterans. Truly stunning, my friends. Curtail CPRF street agitation. Subvert CPRF influence. Well, I mean, at this point, like I, like I said, I really don't care which route, route we go. But what if you did want to go that route? We can. Why not? Oopsie, why did I click on that then? So, I want to see what happens first. Protest over voting results. Oh boy. Our official conducted the process of voting on the constitutional amendments, but they did so in an extremely sloppy manner. The liberal opposition are considering the elections meaningless, most ignore the vote. However, the Moscow Communists, led by Valery, Valery Arashkin, did not miss the moment and organized mass protests in Moscow. The amendments were adopted, but with much worse results than expected, which was a blow to the authorities and caused a wave of resentment in society. We must be more careful next time. Wrangle the oligarchs. Expand government framework. Against chipivisitation. Chipivization. Seems the public outrage over our lockdowns and mass vaccines have reached a critical point. The communists have openly risen up against us, injecting microchips into our citizens. What? Also, why were the leaders of the anti vaccination movement in our local administration chosen by the pro Western opposition? Huh, let's slow down a little. Yes, our systems of surveillance and lockdowns were a bit too extreme, but everyone was doing it, yes. Um, compared to Australia, Britain, this was nothing. How, how, whatever. As long as they're happy, I suppose. We cannot tarnish our beloved president's image over this worthless drivel. The governor of uh, Khabarovsk Krai was arrested overnight on charges of being connected to a series of alleged murders in the early 2000s and allegations of corruption by a detachment of police officers from Moscow. The arrest was met with immediate backlash from the public, with some initial protests erupting on Lenin Square demanding for Fergal's release and reinstatement as governor of Khabar Khabarovsk Krai, as his arrest is widely seen as a political move and evidence that the heavily criticized for having little to no weight. Sergei Kravchuk, the mayor of Khabarovsk, has went on to condemn the protests for the breach of the COVID-19 lockdown, as we want to support the arrest, much to the chagrin of the public. Justice will be served. Oh no, communist forces are rising up. Large protests in Khabarovsk. Supporters of Governor Sergei Fergal, who was arrested for organizing murders, staged unauthorized protests in Khabarovsk Krai. The largest unauthorized action took place in the center of Khabarovsk. Protesters gathered on Lenin Square and at the governor's administration and the regional government then marched through the city's central streets and returned to the square, where they continued the rally. According to the local government, between 15 to 20,000 people took part in the march. The police did not detain anybody. The rally, which lasted for about four hours, collected signatures in support of Fergal and gave the floor to anyone wishing to speak. Khabarovsk City Hall did not receive applications for the rally and could not approve it, as all mass events are banned due to the pandemic. Also, an unauthorized march was held in Komsolmolsk on Amur, more than a thousand people rallied there. And the town of Beacon, about 50 people took to the streets in support of Fergal. Watch the situation closely. The, pe the people speak. Encourage domestic production. Strength in Gazprom. I like that. Encourage domestic production. With the chaos and gulf, the supply chains is clear we must increase the number of our domestic products. This will also slow down our brain drain issue and will give more focus to new industries that require skilled labor. Protests skyrocket over Sergei Fergal's arrest. The recent arrest of Sergei Fergal has seen a massive backlash from the public, especially from the former governor's home region of Ka Khabarovsk. Although the initial protests in Moscow over the arrest at Lenin Square have been relatively tame over the last week, the protests have grown to full size marches opposing the government sanctioned arrest, with the same levels of protests being organized in Russia's Far Eastern cries on the Amur. Police forces have deployed to monitor the evolving situation, however, it's become largely or increasingly unlikely that the protests will die down in what is seen as a major breach of the governmental power. Breach in lockdown. Build uh, Zir Zirinovsky leads a march for Fergal. When Sergei Fergal was arrested, everyone froze in anticipation. How would Zirinovsky react and he did not fail? Contrary to expectations and fears, of Vladimir Bulfich uh, stood himself at the head of the March of Thousands, Challenging the system. He was not afraid to become the face of resistance, ignited the fire of people's anger, and showed that the LDPR is not just a party, but a fist, ready to strike at those who threaten its interests. 
With this gesture, Zaranovsky exploded their political arena, for no one could have expected such a bold move from the old leader. A stunning show of force. Libertarian Party splits. The unregistered Libertarian Party of Russia, LPR, is finally split into two organizations with the same name and symbols, one of them led by Sergei Boyko, held as Congress a week ago, the other led by Mikhail Svetlov last weekend. The founding Congress of Mikhail Svetlov's supporters took place a week after the extraordinary Congress of another faction of the Liberal Democratic Party led by Sergei Boyko. Both forms were convened to eliminate the consequences of the split that arose due to disagreements between the leadership of the party and the principles and business faction held by Mr. Svetlov. However, in fact, this bill is legitimized. The two parts of the parties decided to work independently and do not plan to cooperate with each other. Well, it happens. Mm. Beirut, military advancements. Gazprom. It seems like we really want to go way harder on oligarchs. Fund advanced military advancement. The MIC is still one of the biggest industries we have. These factories not only provide us with weapons we can sell abroad, but also attract more jobs and make use of our resources domestically. Americans have managed to increase their capabilities in no small part of the military contractors or creating high tech to bomb the Middle East. We should follow their example. Or Gazprom. Which I think I want to do too, but oligarchs will do that one next time. Maybe the next campaign. Anti French coup in Mali. Parts of the Malian military carried out uh, an anti government coup. After seizing power swiftly, the new junta has announced plans to withdraw from the French sphere of influence and pursue economic and political independence. It must act promptly to take advantage of the situation and align the new anti imperialist forces in the region with Russia. Africa roars. Oh, look at that. Africa's always been taken advantage of by the so called Golden Billion. Methods changed, of course. They shifted from outright colonialism to more subtle neo imperialist tactics of economic domination, however. Nothing lasts forever. Many nations in Africa, particularly those in the Francophone region, are finally standing up against the unfairness they face in their lives. They're not only raising their national flags, but also the Russian flags. They have to be at war for this. Huh. Wagner mercenaries. Interesting. Abe resigns. That's fine. COVID doesn't exist. What are you talking about? You're funny. Funny, funny, funny. I should probably sign these guys to different places too. This is the only one we have. Alexei Navalny admitted to the hospital. Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny is unconscious in the hospital suffering from suspected poisoning, his spokeswoman has said. The anti-corruption campaigner fell ill during a flight on the plane made an emergency landing in Omsk, where doctors said he was in a coma and they were trying to save his life. It seems suspect. Something was put in his seat in an airport cafe. The Kremlin said that it wished Mr. Navalny a speedy recovery. Mr. Navalny, 44 years of age, has been for years among Vladimir Putin's staunchest critics. Mr. Navalny was on a ventilator in a coma and that the hospital is now full of police officers. All of his belongings were being confiscated, his wife explained. They also, she also said that the doctors were initially ready to share any information, but then they later claimed that the toxicology tests had been delayed and were clearly playing for time, not saying what they know. Watch his condition closely. Keep working on the industrial development. Malian military junta ready for extended partnership. Actually, development, industry, functional competence. This industry, academic, moderate income hardships, poverty rate, industrial development, intermediate manufacturing, huh? The government of the West African nation of Mali has recently been overthrown and replaced with the military junta. In a bit of security, power, and legitimacy, the junta has been on search for foreign partners, and they're now petitioning to us for support. It goes without saying that we should back the new regime, but there are some debates as how much we can promise new Malian friends. Should we simply sign some economic accords, or should we commit to overseas pre military presence on top of that? Sign economic agreements, sign economic agreements, and then more. And more, yes. Oh, look at that. We got a little bit of money for that. Lose money, get more oligarchic imp influence, get another factory, increase Moscow's budget. Fund the Chechen Republic. Improve Crimean infrastructure. Uh, 
I want as little debt as possible. I hate debt. We are here to help the Malian people out. Join trade deals. Oh, our Siri asked for economic help. Our Syrian friends have been struggling for the past decade ever since the onset of the Arab Spring. Fortunately, the past several years have seen the civil war steadily cooling down, and they are now in stable enough position where economic aid will not just go in a dumpster. They've approached us to ask for our assistance, and they'll have it. We'll continue expanding our presence in the Middle East one ruble at a time. We'll help them to our fullest. Of course, we'll stand, stand, send funds to our Syrian partners. Rebuilding Syrian brothers. See, it looks like he gives you less. Our eastern neighbor is home to the second economy in the world, yet it is the main producer of goods. A nation such as, with such magnitude has a lot of expertise that can be shared with us, considering from where they started. Let their industrials show the way to prosperity, for it is time to us, for us to replicate their techniques. Are you still fighting here? I should have sent you volunteers a long time ago. Oh, maybe you can't. Oh, no, they're not at Civil War-ish. Well, they are, but not really. Turkish incursion, huh? CPRF protests against local corrupt officials, inexperienced generals, devastated economy, war exhaustion. Let them have it. A little ahead of time there. Power plants would be nice. Research speed. All that stuff is good. Well, expand East Af African core missions in Mali. And economic contracts. Huh. Do economic contracts with Mali. When removed, you get a lot more money. Utilize church authority. Revolution in Kyrgyzstan. This of people are out on the streets and, and are serious. The Kyrgyz government's like it. What resist? Should we help it? It's none of our business. Okay. Russian economy of the future. There was a time when the Russian economy had been some of the best, had seen some of its best years. Ironically, the period of prosperity occurred uh, during the world, world financial crisis, and now it seems we once again reached a golden age. As the world burns, the world economy crashes, we stand alone at the top. High income from all oil and gas, huge industrial expansion. The end of lockdowns, everything seems to be happening at the right time. Let's toast to our president's efforts bearing fruit. People will seize the parliament building, leader of the government, and the president resign. Soon there will be early elections in the country. And it's going to change for us. More things change, more they say the same. Help them out, why now? Military, uh, I wouldn't mind getting, uh, it's not bad, infrastructure is not bad to have, but, I really don't want the military, I mean, we need the military factory, don't get me wrong, but, still. Saudi Civil War. City of Mecca. Or Hezbollah. Who gets any one division? Some of these guys are really freaking thick divisions. 29 combat isn't the one I'm talking about, though. 60 combat width. That's insane. That is just freaking huge. That's why we have to send it. Just ginormous. <coughs> and trade deals. National Unity Day. Today on November 4th, Russia celebrates National Unity Day. This holiday is one of the most significant in the country and reminds of the importance of the unity and solidarity of the citizens. Numerous cultural and sports events, festive processions, concerts, and festivals are held on this day. All regions of Russia actively participate in the celebration, demonstrating their commitment to the ideals of unity. Special attention is paid to the education and patriotic feelings among young people. School children and students take part in parades and festive events where they are told about the significance of the National Unity Day and its role in the history of the country. 
and so that the younger generation realize the importance of unity and solidarity to achieve common goals. On those dates, it's important to remember the importance of solidarity and unity of all Russian citizens in achieving common goals and developing the country. National Unity Day calls on every person to actively participate in the life of society and strive for the well-being and prosperity of Russia. In unity, our strength. We're just trying to build, 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 build. Ah, and we're here. Welcome back to the Middle East. Russians in the Middle East wouldn't believe you. Third Congo War, look at that. Permit Wagner forces into the DRC. Oh, and Saudi Arabia as well. Resolve Saudi Iran schism. Oh, they would have gotten mercenaries here. I guess we're fighting these guys too. We're going to lose them anyways. It's fine. Sure, why not? You guys win here, maybe? I mean, you are a thick buddy boy division. Increase the Russo Chinese ties. As well as the recent negotiations with Chinese officials, we have managed to sign many profitable treaties regarding technological and trade cooperation between the two countries. Hope this partnership will continue, as it is proven quite to be quite beneficial for our economy and to our Chinese friends. Eh, COVID is over. COVID never existed. That's right. It must be pretty easy to go over uh, that route. So we got did all the stuff on the right side here. Move against the fifth column. Defend them. Anti-globalist bulwark. Amplify state media. Renew the mandate. Well, fight against the right. In the 2010s, our government has cracked down on the national sentiments, but primarily of anti-migrant and xenophobic kinds. Yet the threat still remains and never seems to flourish. We cannot forget how many of the neo-Nazis flocked to the Ukrainian side. Uh, to fight the Bolshevik presidency and their bootleggers. And while we have nationals who support a cause, it is best to make sure they cannot propagandize their ideology. They're just kind of holding out there, huh? Biden's declared president. Very nice. Top them out. For truth defends Stalin's donor. The Kyle Prilipin's party for truth continues to gain recognition through street actions this time. The party members react to the scandal around the catering point called Stalin and Donor. Some Pravdans went to distribute leaflets in support of the Stalinist shawarma, while others decided to picket the building of the Memorial Human Rights Center to demand an apology for comparing Joseph Stalin with Adolf Hitler. A pub of Moscow's Koptevo district named in honor Stalin attracted public attention in early January. The menu included shawarma, Stalin's with double meat, and from Beria with Timkali sauce. And the cook worked in an NKVD uniform. Among others, Jan Rachinsky from the memorial spoke out against the opening of the cafe with Stalin's name on social media. After that, the For Truth Party called on the memorial to apologize for rewriting history and disrespecting Stalin. And they decided to take the discussion offline. This is definitely one of the ways to gain votes of all time. Truly enthralling. Renew the mandate. Pro Putin campaign. Anti globalist bulwark. Increase online censorship. Wow. Increase FSB's budget. Assist Donbass republics.
Glorify our historic victory. Amplify state media. Harsh crackdowns. That'd be good to get rid of too. Prepare the Union State with Lushenko. Defend them. The two Georgian breakaway states have been our allies and brothers ever since the wars of rebellion. The people are resilient and proud and loyal, which is most important. However, it's clear that we did a disservice to them by letting them be isolated from the world. We must integrate them into our economic and defense sphere, for they deserve to have their regions prosper. Oligarchs request civilian investment in Krasnoyarsk. Other oh, seven. Held Russian Spring. Move against Fifth Column. For all of our efforts, it seems that Nav Navalny and his flock continue to go against us. Funny, our Russian nationalists have compared Caucasians to cockroaches wanted to bring Western democracy to us. Why? Just because he went to Yale University to learn some sort of statesmanship? Unfortunately, he would not die like Tessak or mysteriously disappear like his previous Nazi colleagues. He's a reformed man, a liberal one, but while he indeed it might have changed, past sins are never forgotten. Western sanctions, Russo Chinese trade deals, tender authoritarianism. A senior oligarch from Krasnoyarsk has approached the government with an offer of support. Uh, Kras. Ah, there it is. It states efforts from critical underinvestment, and a government initiated economic stimulus program would certainly make him reconsider his stance on certain proposed government policies. The oligarch sits under several important committees. It's quite famous for being able to cut deals. I think it's worth more than the Federal Assembly. I want it anyways. There you go. Finish this one in about a week. I want that political power. Navalny arrested. Bulletin critic Alexei Navalny, who survived a nerve attack or nerve agent attack in August, has been detained upon his return to Moscow from Germany. The activist, 44, was taken into custody in Shermetyevo Airport, um, where he arrived in a diverted flight. Navalny accuses a Russian authorities of assassination attempt, a claim supported by the investigative journalist. His detention has drawn condemnation from the EU, France, and Italy, who demand his release. Despite warnings of arrest, Navalny returned to Russia on Sunday, greeted by supporters before being taken away by police. Oh boy. He is currently held at a Moscow police station. For violating probation terms related to the previous conviction, he maintains that he was politically motivated. Additionally, a new fraud charge has been brought uh, against him for alleged misuse of funds in his anti corruption foundation. The troublemaker returns. Got to get some right. Well, I don't know which way I want. I really don't know. Authoritarian Democratic support goes up. Let's go this one. Look at that political power, though. It's nice. Four point five percent is not bad. Permit Wagner forces in Saudi Arabia. Well, let's do this one. I need to utilize church authority. LDPR protests against uh, local anti Russian laws. Uh, I'll about that. Well, I guess you can go this way. If you really want to, okay. Mass protests. Oh, the Rogam Dam in Tajikistan are completion. Good for them. Mass protests over Alexei Nav Navalny. Tens of thousands of protesters ignored extreme call and police warnings to demand the release of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny on Saturday. Navalny is called on support of the protest after being left, being arrested last weekend as he returned to Russia from Germany for the first time since being poisoned with a nerve agent. He says it was slipped to him by the state security agents in August. Both protesters defined the ban, and in at least one case in temperatures below negative 45 degrees Celsius, turned out in force. Leonid Volkov, a Navalny ally, called on, on them to do the exact same next weekend to try to free Navalny from what he called the clutches of his killers in central Moscow. While well, Reuters have reported estimated up to 40,000 people had gathered in one of the biggest unauthorized rallies for years, police were seen roughing, roughly detaining people, bundling them up in a nearby van. Some protesters chanted, Putin is a thief, disgrace and freedom to Navalny. Crush those Western crop torches. Oi, that's not good. How are you learning here? Desert, Desert Fox, Panzer Leader. Very good. Death of Alexander Vladimir Vysotsky. 
Admiral of Russian Navy, Vladimir Vysotsky has passed away due to heart problems at the age of 66. He was buried with military honors on February 8th at the Troikurovsky Cemetery. Thank you for your service, comrade. A just Russian versus with for truth. In December 2020, there was evidence that a just Russia was preparing to unite with the parties for truth and patriots of Russia. At the end of December, uh, party leader Sergei Mironov confirmed these intentions on January 20th, 2021. An agreement was announced. The indication of the parties was planned in February, March of the same year under the name A Just Russia Patriots for Truth or A Just Russia for Truth. Yeah, this will help them, but we'll see. There are troubles on political makers. Renew the mandate. Pro Putin campaign. I like that. Uh huh. Those are exercises. What am I doing that either? There are trouble some politicians though. It is fortunate that the CPRF has a lot of questionable people in their party we can deal with. Anti vouchers, crazy conspiracy theorists, and general anti government dissidents, of course. They are the minority of the leftist movement, but they can tarnish the image of the Communist Party, and that is preferable. Minamar descends into civil war. Nice. Did a coup in the Republic of the Congo. The Arabian Republic. I'm just here for a good time. That way, we can kill off these divisions too. Becoming better, Panzer Leader, Desert Fox. Cause of Russian unity. Utilize Soviet nostalgia. Review the mandate. This is, it is the will of the people that keeps Putin in power. For all the talk about authoritarianism, public opinion is indeed what matters. But of the government, but of Putin himself. But the people are willing to tolerate corruption and inefficiency as long as the man in charge is the one they support. And hey, if it worked with Obama and Trump, why should we, we, why should we be different? Hello. We just got encircled. Well, we tried. Sorry, Hezbollah, we tried. Resurgence. Victory Day. Oh, look at that. And I'll send you back. Have fun. Just that's the way to do it. Uh-huh. Review the mandate. Pro Putin campaign. Apply the upgrade pass to defense to your intelligence agency. Get more political power, which you do like. I don't like interest rates factor though. Is this Donbass Republics? Push for Novorossian unification. Just 
widespread anti-West propaganda. Once we've been eagerly waiting our descendants into the West, we thought we could become part of the glorious Christian civilization, yet the Americans denied us, and now, well, why shouldn't we be happy with that? And we don't need to even spread misinformation either. We just keep hammering them with stuff like Little St. James Island and the Culture Wars, let them all sort it out by themselves and watch fireworks. Or anti-Ukrainian military exercises. During the 2014 uh, Ukraine coup, legitimate President Yanukovych decided to flee his nation to Russia. That has been a crucial mistake that we've been paying for ever since. Since then, Ukraine has been military preparing for a conflict with us, with NATO training their leadership and troops. We should ideally, too, prepare for such a scenario. Our forces are rusty after all. I kind of go with this one. I kind of want to increase FSB's budget. Well, FSB has been a tried and true method to protect Russia from enemies. After and For all their hard work, I'd say a pay raise is well deserved. Harsh crackdowns. Well, since most of the harmless options have been ineffective, it seems that only harsh crackdowns can stop the opposition from tearing our country apart. Oman will be deployed to, will be deployed to quell them. Unlike liberal democracies, though, our forces do not use rubber bullets or water cannons, which limits their effectiveness. But the justice of the rubber baton and metal shield shall, be, shall meet every wrongdoer. Or prepare the Union State. In 1999, Alexander Lushenko signed a declaration of the Union State with Boris Yeltsin, of course. But he was a Batka. Well, take over Russia once his agreement took power. However, with the ascension of Vladimir Putin, the project was ground to a halt. But nothing can be stalled forever. And our president is focused on achieving the Union State as long as soon as possible. He even bought Abkhazian wine for a meeting with Lushenko. And that's how serious he is in this endeavor. We're going to go with this route first. And we're going to go harsh crackdowns next. Military incursions. There's four divisions in Crimea. Eh? We should probably make divisions too. Oh, these are our special forces, huh? These are freaking huge divisions, man. They're too common, but it's not bad. Well, it's a giant mess of like a conglomeration of things. Which I'll probably edit here and there. I should be making divisions. My bad. Sixty-five freaking combat width. Holy cow! Because we're making this one. I would say it wants to be a tank division, but it's not really a tank division. This will be our tank division. Your economic contracts would be nice too. Build faster, build more. Let's cross Noyarsk. Good, we got it done. You meant to go for collapses, that's nice. We're ready to blow up more people. I love blowing up people. Bakar Tapalov. Plans of pursuit politics. After de dedicating his many years to serving the military, Andrei Kartapolov has expressed his desire to return, retire from active duty and transition to a new role within the State Duma committees. His wealth of experience and expertise makes him a valuable asset to Russian politics and ministries, but it's also important to recognize his exceptional skills as a commander that could greatly benefit our military affairs. The decision on whether to accept Kartapolov's suggestion now rests in the hands of the president. It's better for him to stay. He served well, we need him on the political front now. I won't use you, but you can come in. If you want, it's fine. It's whatever. It's cool. You're just here to beat people up. That's all I care about. U.S. Church Authority. There. Ah. Good. Harsh crackdowns. Uh, yeah. There we go. Nice. Thousand years of Putinism. Seems that the position of our dear president has been submitted. He has navigated multiple crises and reinvigorated our system. The story and legacy shall be rewritten or written about in the history books. A state of stasis led unchanged for 20 years. Let's be ambitious and toss this stasis to last another millennia. Expand government framework. A grip on the state makes it easy to laze around and do nothing. However, our president thinks that we should strengthen our administration by getting new connections and alliances with the system ready. The All Russian People's Party, or All Russian People's Front, is already established system. All we need to do is expand it. Hello. 
they go here as long as we don't get attacked we actually do relatively okay can you stop attacking them a thousand years of Putinism remove tender authoritarianism which you lose political power very nice pro Putin campaign It is 2021. Give me commandos, nice as well. Death of Wall Street, oh. Well, that's really not good. Still, as a ruble, free social payments. And the world's collapsing around us. I love the world. We're 70 days from a worldwide financial crisis. Stabilize the ruble. Send in the police. You're just here to beat up people. That's pretty much it. CRPF criticizes economic policies following the collapse of Wall Street and the ensuing political crisis. Rush, of course, suffered it too. One of the main critics of our way of handling the crisis is the CPRF and its leader, Gennady Zyuganov. In recent Duma speech, and shortly after, a public rally, Zyuganov has called for a nationalization of country's wealth and destruction of oligarchy, stating once again we see a complete dysfunction of system work. Capitalism, the main blood of mankind in Russia. For 30 years we've been trying to incorporate ourselves into this unjust system. Now we reap the rewards. Something similar happened in the 90s after the default. We barely pulled the country from the abyss. Shame on United Russia. Shame on Central Bank for the predatory policies of praise and working people. Only socialism is the answer for all the problems in the USSR. We built the biggest economy, built the, the world has ever seen. With no Western help, no bank loans, only an economy that was driven by the people. With the crash affecting many Russian citizens, his words resonate with more people than usual. It's easier to, it's easier to be in the opposition. So, But I think we'll end it there. We've done really well. I'm sorry I'm not uh, as energized or uh, great uh, or like just energetic, I guess, technically. Ooh, that's really bad. Um, but it is what it is for now, just because I am a little sick, so. Harder stability and political power? That's alright, that's okay. Because we're probably going to go comments in this campaign. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do with Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.